Hello, my name is Michael Raziel, and today, my incredible guest, I have Chris Mirabelli. We are Rutgers alums. We're friends, but mostly Rutgers alums together. Chris, I appreciate you coming on the show, man. We all know the Olympics have now been postponed. They were 2020. They are now 2021, pending some uh, trademarks, I guess we'll call them. But with that, like, let's start there. Like, How long since your injury... You know, you had that that major heart injury, you know, your shoulder injury. How long were you training for the 2020 games after coming back for that injury? So what's that timeline look like? Uh, uh, well, so the injury occurred in 2017. So, yeah, it was it was it's been three years, six days a week for three years uh, for the Olympic Games and, and attempting to make the team. So it, it was a long time. <laughs> yeah, a, a long time to say the least. And I guess it, in uh, your honest opinion, what percent chance would you have given yourself to make the 2020 games versus getting this extra year to train, getting this extra year to mature as a person, as an athlete versus the 2021 games? Um, the Let's just say that the 2021 games are now a lot more realistic than the 2020. Um, I would say that the percentage goes up a lot based on just one another year out of of training and, and being a little bit more distant from the injury, um, gaining more explosion in, in my arm and body. Uh, so I would say the 2021 games are much, much more realistic than 2020, uh, just based off of age, based off of maturity, based off of competition experience. Uh, I would say as a, I feel like going into the Olympic trials or Olympic games as a 25 year old, I don't know why it just seems a lot better than being 24 years old and going, you know what I mean? <laughs> I like that. That's a pretty good, uh, it's a pretty good answer. I definitely matured a little bit between 2020, 24 and 25. So I'll, uh, I'll definitely give you that. So when you heard that the 2020 games were being postponed and thankfully not canceled, obviously what, I guess, what were some of those emotions that, that ran through your head and what were some of the, the positives and negatives that you thought immediately off the bat? Well, Obviously, the Olympic Games were always in the back of my head, um, but I was I was more upset with the whole season kind of being canceled one by one. Uh, I remember the the day the day I started hearing that all USAT all USATF meets are going to be canceled. Uh, obviously, you know, came with a lot of emotion because they're training six days a week, every every single day, hours a day, and and in hopes to compete and make money. Uh, so once that once that's out, you know, there's the, the the ability to make money doesn't, you know, no longer exists. So obviously it came with a financial burden. But I would say as you know, as an athlete, like any other athlete training every day and having something be canceled really is it sucks. But, you know, like the first month I was really upset, uh, but I never stopped training. You know, like I've obviously faced adversity before. So I never really stopped training. And then the next month I was like, you know, I was talking to one of my friends who uh, made a 2016 Olympic team. And he was like, dude, just, just, just get better now. Like that's, it's really just as simple as that. Just get better. And, you know, I thought about that for a while. I'm like, yeah, but I wanted to show what I could do this year. And he was like, yeah, but by the time next year comes, you're going to be twice as good. And being twice as good, hopefully we'll get you on that Olympic team. You know, so, you know, it came with highs and lows, but I think now I kind of, it's just, I'm accept, I accepted it. Uh, I'm training to get better, obviously, every day. And, and if the time comes where there is a track meet, which is probably going to happen like last minute, I'm, I've, I've stayed ready. I'm, I'm training and being ready at any point of time. So just being ready for that and, and hopefully let that carry into the Olympic trials and Olympic games for next year. I, I love it, man. I think again, what you've doing, what you're doing, what you've overcome with your injury, uh, your shoulder injury, obviously, you know, figuring out the, the the heart problem as well, which obviously you're completely over at this point, which is fantastic, but something to keep an eye on, of course. And so, you say get better. Mm -hmm. What exactly does get better mean, right? Throw throw a javelin further, but how do you go about doing that again, given essentially an extra fifteen months from the time that we found out that the games were canceled versus you know only three months? understanding that the games and the trials would be coming up very shortly. Right. Well, once I moved out here, I have a great coach. Uh, his name is Duncan Atwood. He was a former American record holder. He threw 306 feet, I believe, um, which is crazy, crazy far. 
And we started, we came out here and, and, you know, I started working with him a couple of days a week, just rowing. And we, he noticed a lot of different things from my college coach. And so we kind of made that transition into a different approach to, uh, not necessarily a different approach to throwing, but just kind of different ways to do things. And I always say like muscle memory takes a long time to build. So being able to break down something, break down a habit and then be able to build new muscle memory um, on in, in it comes to technique of throwing uh, takes time. So I think that time, that extra time that I'm getting in order to work on those things that my coach and I want to do uh, is really going to be beneficial for me. So mainly working on these new technique cues, uh, getting stronger, getting more explosive. I always think getting more explosive is one of the most important things to um, throwing. So what is it like physically for you and on your body to make sure that you will be ready with this entire extra year of intense training on top of it? Yeah, that's that's funny because it's uh, <laughs> I talk to so many athletes and they're like, I was ready to I was ready to go. Like my body was ready. I was finally my body stopped finally stopped feeling like crap because you're lifting all the time and you're training. And, um, so yeah, that was one of the first things I had to figure out when my some of the meets and the Olympics were, were canceled was, uh, well, what, what do I go now with with my training? How do I you know, what what phase do I enter into now with with lifting and and my general training and uh the first thing i did was i reached out to my strength coach and we kind of went back into a strength phase program and then uh, a, a eight week strength phase program and then we built and that was the past eight weeks and then now i'm into a uh, prep phase program to hopefully lead me into a competition phase program so maybe there'll be a meet in september but uh it's just about like you know correctly timing your body and so the throwing aspect was always there. The throwing always stays consistent. I was, I'm still throwing like twice a week. Um, so that stays consistent, but it's mostly like the lifting that uh, most athletes have to be uh, weary of because, you know, if be, prepping your body and peaking your body and then all of a sudden entering into a strength phase, you really have to be hypercritical of how, how your body feels on that day, how the lift is, how much weight you're using. Um, so yeah, that was a big aspect in, in transitioning from, peaking to back to a, a strength phase that I usually do in the off season. Yeah. It, it's gotta be just wacky for your body too. And again, you know, transitioning, you know, you have to do it very delicately. I'm assuming I, I obviously have never had to do anything like that, but I, I assume that there has to be some sort of delicate transition because again, you can't really have an injury now because that sets you back so much, so much further. How are you feeling about your chances of making the 2021 games in Tokyo? Well, first, the biggest thing that, helped me during this time when everything was canceled was just being able to stay present. You know, I was, I was so caught up and for a while I was so caught up in all the training I did the, this past whole year alone. And then I was like, man, everything's done. Like I was real down, but then, you know, I started, you know, I started just being able to become more present in the moment. Like, okay, nothing is really that bad right now. You're training, you're throwing, you're still doing what you love. Um, so nothing is nothing right now is that bad. And, and as far as the season goes, just stay ready. You know, just stay. I swear, like, I think that's I think that's going to be the biggest difference between me and other athletes is because some athletes see this time as, OK, well, I give my body to rest. I see this time as taking advantage because these athletes are resting. and It's time for me to take advantage and 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 and, and fill that gap. And so being able to fill that gap and 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 uh every day just i this year i feel the the most prepared technique wise and uh strength wise and if i have another whole entire year of what i just did then i think the chances of me making the olympic team next year is is a lot a lot better um than where i would be last year or maybe even this year i love it man congratulations on all that and then so do we know what I mean, as you said, the the first competition is going to kind of just pop up essentially out of nowhere. I mean, you guys got to keep your ear to the ground and really know what's going on. Do they have any idea in terms of how qualification is going to work? Because I know that's one of the biggest things that led to the cancellation outside of everything else that's going on is there's so many people that haven't qualified and they need to figure out a way to do that. I mean, have you heard anything in terms of understanding how to even make the Olympics moving forward? 
Yeah, so they changed the qualification window. Um, so uh, it was supposed, I think the qualification window opens in September. Um, I, mean, I think it may have been September. Or no, it might have been January of the new year. So you can start, so they changed the qualification window from this year to next year. So I believe it's January 1st of 2021 up until the Olympic Games. Um, now that that is very uh, it's it's not fair for throwers who can't compete indoors because the two the two the three events you can't throw indoors is javelin, discus, and hammer. And so the athletes that the athletes that don't compete and their spring meets for our events they don't open up until like March. So now we only have a couple months just to make the, the Olympic team, and I think. That's, I think that's something in discussion right now with the USATF to see how they could figure that out. Maybe open more meets in, in the winter for athletes, like in, in warmer places, because I mean, you literally only given three months and everyone else is given six months, you know, so it's, it's not, it's not fair right now. So I think they're trying to figure something out. Um, but, uh, you know, as I think I, it also just all depends on how, the kind of meets you're getting into. Like if I go to Europe and find highly competitive meets, I can, cause I don't know if you heard of it, it's more of a point basis now um, to qualify for the Olympic games. So if you have to earn points at highly competitive meets, so you, I would have to fly to uh, Europe to find those highly, highly competitive meets to throw and earn more points. Um, but like I said, in the span of three months in order to do that, to figure out the logistics of it, um, getting accepted into the meets is, is a burden, but it's uh, nothing, nothing I can't handle, and you know it's it's something that has to be done if I really want to make the Olympic team, which I do. I love that mindset, man. That's really the only thing you can do. You got to figure out a way to get it. You've made it this far. Uh, I'm very confident you'll be able yeah. to figure out how to how to do it moving forward. But Chris, this has been absolutely fantastic. Kudos and congratulations to you for everything that you've done. We're going to be rooting for you, man. Chris Mirabelli. Chris Mirabelli, there we go. Um, <laughs> USA Olympic hopeful for track and field javelin thrower. Chris, really appreciate your time today, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thanks, everyone.